Hi, my name is Jo Lambers and I am academic dermatologist and IPC counselor practicing in Belgium. I would like to share with you what I answer when patients ask me, doctor, does it help to take food supplements to improve my psoriasis? I'm sure you also have had this question before. To get a balanced possible answer to this, I need to go and consider these two monkeys. Kanto on the left side is aging fairly well. Owen on the other side is not. And actually the difference is their diet. Kanto on the left side is eating healthy food and is restricted on calories. The comparison monkeys, like Owen is one of them, which ate as much as they wanted, had an increased risk of disease like three times that of the calorie restricted group on the left side and a threefold increased risk of death. This is a study dating already from 1989 and is still ongoing. So it's all about calorie restriction. Now, linking that to psoriasis, how does weight link to psoriasis? Well, it seems that weight loss improves psoriasis, as shown in this Danish study. But let's consider it more scientifically. What is the effect of calorie restriction? Well, next to weight loss, it reduces disturbance of metabolic parameters here in the middle. It has an anti-aging effect. And please look on the right side. It gives less oxida oxidative stress, less tumor necrosis factor alpha, as you can see, and molecules like the sirtuins are going up. Please remember the sirtuins for my further talk. Now, caloric restriction reverses aging derived effects by igniting numerous pathways, as you can see here, involved in the improvement of health parameters. For instance, you see again the sirtuins, but you also see mTOR that you may know from um, vascular tumors. And this figure also shows that you can mimic this by administering certain compounds like resveratrol, which is present in, in red grapes, for instance, but also green tea components, um, uh, as you can see here, the quercetin or the myricetin, but also curcumin and metformin that we sometimes give uh, to hydrodenitis patients. Now, interestingly, in psoriasis, sirtuins are dysregulated. You can see here on the left side that CERT1 is too low in comparison to controls. And on the right hand side, you see like CERT6, for instance, is too high. And as you can see here, CERT6 stimulates TNF alpha and it's too high in psoriasis. And we all know that TNF alpha is a cytokine involved in psoriasis pathogenesis. So let's go back to the products that seem to mimic caloric restriction effects, like the caloric restriction mimetics, for instance, resveratrol, but you also recognize here curcumin, metformin again, and green tea extracts like quercetin. Several studies have been conducted, uh, be it in, in nematodes or in mice or in humans, and it is clear that caloric restriction mimetics positively affect human health, both at system level and at tissue level. Now, my cycle is, is beginning to get uh, filled. Uh, you see here that caloric restriction mimetics have also been tested in psoriasis. Here you see an overview of active dietary compounds and their effects on microRNA expression patterns. MicroRNAs regulate the expression of certain RNAs and hence uh, also proteins with local and systemic effects that may be related to psoriasis. And another study where topical resveratrol seems to improve psori uh, psoriasis lesions is also shown here. So people have been looking at the effect in psoriasis of the caloric restriction mimetics. 
The ultimate dream is, of course, that caloric restriction mimetics, so taking a kind of food supplement, would help you lose weight and would help lose our psoriasis patients uh, lose weight. Hence the question. You could say, aha, the circle is round. So this is a systematic review, for instance, summarizing that resveratrol supplementation significantly decreases body weight, especially in obese patients. And not so much in diabetic patients, but it rings a bell to our psoriatic patients. So, so okay, we tell our patients to take products like resveratrol, curcumin. Well, actually, no. Why? Because the products available in the shops, there is a problem with uh, the body processing them in order to reach the result. And there is also a problem with dosing. Processing by the body. What we know about all food supplements is that they are not studied like the drugs are. It's more uh, liberal. It comes to market before the in-depth studies are really uh, being done. So they come to market less regulated. And what you see is that, for instance, the oral absorption is really not leading to the right concentrations at the end organs, like the skin, like shown in, in this study. Moreover, it can be dangerous to take too much of the caloric restriction mimetics, like antioxidants, for instance, as then they get a pro-oxidant and even cytotoxic effect. So really the opposite effect from what you may want. And there are studies, for instance, um, in smokers uh, that had to take a high dose of vitamin E and it actually induced lung cancer. So it's, it's actually not that innocent to just start taking food supplements. Actually, we can say stick to a Mediterranean diet to our patients. That might even be the best thing to say, but this is not always easy. Um, however, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Some drugs based on the pathways I have been describing are promising. And you might have heard from Tapinarov, for instance, Tapinarov, in this nice review, is a novel, first-in-class, small-molecule, topical, therapeutic, aryl hydrocarbon receptor, or AHR, modulating agent, currently in late-stage clinical trials for the treatment of psoriasis and atopic dermatitis. And here, the unique mechanism of action of Tapinarov cream, in this uh, case, for the treatment of psoriasis is reviewed in the context of the current understanding of the signaling of the AHR pathway in the skin, which is very much linked to the effect of the caloric restriction mimetics. And there is a growing body of clinical trial evidence on the efficacy and safety of Tapinarov cream in psoriasis and atopic dermatitis. So my take 10 takeaways for you. What we can say to our patients is that we cannot give clear recommendations on intake of oral food supplements in psoriasis. We do not know the right dose, the right form. Overdosing can actually be dangerous because there is not a lot of regulation on what is on the market. And it seems that a balanced life and diet style with some caloric restriction is most recommended. On the, on the right hand side, you see uh, a cookbook, it's in Dutch, uh, called Third Food um, Cookbook. And actually, this um, shows which food you would have to take in order to stimulate uh, caloric um, restriction. I would say, trying to mimic this. Do keep an eye on the Giro Science World with mTOR. IGFA, AMPK, and sirtuins influenced by metformin, for instance, resveratrol, and sirolimus. That's what I have been showing you with Tapinarov, and actually some topicals like those, um, like uh, Tapinarov, influencing the caloric restriction pathway are quite promising. 
So this is what we can tell our patients. I hope you enjoyed my take 10 and I thank you very much for your attention and wish you all the best. Thank you very much. My email address, if you have more questions, is available here.